I welcome you all again. And uh, the topic for today's discussion is the white matter of the cerebrum. Okay. Remember when we talked about the neurons, the structure and the functional unit of the nervous system, the, the neuron as a structure has got two components, the gray matter, in fact the cell body, the soma and its process. That long process is known as the exon or it makes up, if it is present in the bundle form, it makes up the white matter. Okay, so uh, now we are going to talk about the different white matters according to their functions and according to the locations and all that. The fibers, the nerve fibers which are included in the white matter, they are mostly myelinated. White matter is a term which is not only used for the white fibers, the, the nerve fibers, but it is also used for the supporting cells, for example, neuroglia. So the white matter is basically a general term which is used for the nerve fiber and their, the, and their supporting cells, okay? All right, we have got different type of the white fibers, for example, let me draw you something first. We have two cerebral hemisphere. We all know that, of course. Now, those fibers, those nerve fibers, which connects one area of uh, present in one cerebral hemisphere with the corresponding same area of the other hemisphere, such fibers are known as commissural fibers. This is one type of a nerve fibers. It's just not one fiber. We have a number of fibers which are actually termed as the commissural fibers. They are connecting the uh, two different halves, the corresponding region present in two different halves. Okay? Then we have another fiber which basically connects the one point, one region located with the other region of the same hemisphere or present within the same hemisphere. Such nerve fibers are known as the association fibers. Now there is another third type of the fibers which are running through this uh, brain system or through the central nervous system are those which are basically what they are doing. They are coming all the way from the lower center or the lower part of the central nervous system all the way up. All right, They are coming from the lower part of the central nervous system all the way up and as they reaches to the cortical area, they simple project out. Okay? See how am I drawing this? They are projecting out. Such fibers are known as the projection fibers. And now, so therefore we have got three different types of the nerve fibers. The commissural fibers which are connecting the same corresponding region present in the two different half. These commissural fibers are, are not, for your knowledge, they are not present. They are not only present in the cerebrum. You can appreciate them in the cerebellum and midbrain as well. Then association fibers are those fibers which are connecting the two different areas present within the same cerebral hemisphere. Okay, So they may be short association or they may be long association. For example, if you are connecting the region present in the frontal lobe with the region which is present in the occipital lobe, it requires quite a long fiber. Then we have the projection fibers. These are actually the fibers which are, these are the trap fibers. As they approach the cortical region, they project out in the form of the raises. And so therefore they are named as the projection fibers. Now, we have got quite the examples of these fibers. For example, for the, the commissural fibers, the biggest and well-known fiber or the nerve bundle, commissural, uh, sorry, corpus callosum. Other example for the commissural fibers includes fernix, then we have anterior commissure, posterior commissure, habinular commissure, okay? These are the examples of the commissural fibers which are present within the cerebrum because we have to focus only on the white fibers present in the cerebrum, okay? And um, we are going to talk about each one of them in detail in a short while. Let's talk about the association fibers. The example for the association fibers include cingulum, uncinate fasciculus. We have superior longitudinal fasciculus, inferior longitudinal fasciculus. And then the examples for the projection fibers, well, uh, we do not have exactly the name for, they are not the specific fibers actually. Many fibers of the different tracks which are reaching towards the cortex, they, they take this path, this spreading out path thing, just like a crown. I mean, they spread out like just like a crown. 
So they are termed as the projection fibers. So those fibers which are actually projecting towards the cortical region, they are termed as corona radiata. Now there is another uh, example for the projection fibers, the optic radiation. So we are going to talk about each one of them in detail, okay? We talked about the different, uh, the examples for the commissural fibers which include the corpus callosum, okay? And we have anterior commissure, posterior commissure, we have fornic, we have hepinular commissure. Now we are going to talk about each one of them, okay? Where they are located and uh, what exactly are the relations. Corpus callosum, let's talk about the corpus callosum first. Corpus callosum is the largest white fiber, the example for the commissural fibers, the largest one lone nerve bundle fiber. The corpus callosum tends to connect the two cerebral hemispheres. It is present along the, it is basically a C-shaped nerve bundle which is present below the cortex or beneath the cortex along the longitudinal fissure, okay? And it is connecting the two halves together. Okay, if we have got four different parts of the of the corpus callosum, let's say, let's talk about those parts. It is the C-shaped bundle which is present just beneath the cortex. So it has got four parts, it is divided into four parts. That includes the rostrum, this is your rostrum. Anterior to posteriorly, we have rostrum, we have genome, body, and then we have splenium, the posterior and the most dilated part of the corpus callosum. Now, where exactly this corpus callosum is located? Well, that's quite difficult to understand. However, I will try to make it easy. For example, we have got two cerebral hemisphere and you are looking from behind. Okay? These are your cerebral hemisphere and you are looking from back side of the cerebral hemisphere. Okay? Now, this corpus callosum is basically connecting. It is present here, connecting the two cerebral hemisphere. So, just above this corpus callosum, what exactly can you appreciate? What is this part called? What is this? This is the interhemispheric fissure. The superior surface of the corpus callosum is surrounded or is covered by a very thin sheet or a very thin layer of gray matter which is known as inducium uh, gracium. So this hole is basically covered by a very thin sheet of a gray matter and then just above this inducing gracium, you can actually appreciate the interhemispheric fissure. Remember, for example, if I'm standing at the level of the corpus callosum, I am present in the, along the midline, just in between the two cerebral hemisphere. Just above me, my upper surface is covered by the inducing gracium, and just above that, since there is no matter, no brain matter which is present above me, so we have the interhemispheric connection, or uh, sorry, interhemispheric fissure, okay? Now, talking about my either side, my right and the left side, now, I am now facing the medial side or the medial surface of the cerebral hemisphere on both the sides, okay? My right and the left side. Which part of the medial surface of the cerebral hemisphere is coming into contact to me? That is the gyri. Which gyri? Sing, uh, cingulate gyri, okay? Okay. Now, let's talk about something which is below me or beneath the corpus callosum. Just beneath the corpus callosum, you can actually appreciate two most important structures. Number one, so actually just beneath this genome, especially anterior aspect, is basically related to the uh, double membrane structure, septum pellucidum, okay? And the posteriorly, it is basically related to the fernix. Now, I will try to draw that out. This is your fernix. Inferior posteriorly, we, uh, the corpus callosum, especially the body and the spinium of the corpus callosum is related to the fernix and this anterior part, inferior anteriorly, this is actually the septum pellucidum. What is septum pellucidum? Septum pellucidum is actually a double membrane structure which is separating uh, the two, the anterior horn of the right and the left, of uh, the right and the left lateral ventricle sample. Alright, so this is your uh, superior relation and the medial relations and the inferior relation of the corpus callosum. Now let's talk about the fibers which are actually run through this corpus callosum. Corpus callosum itself is not actually a bundle mass. I must say it is actually those fibers, it provides a pathway for the fibers that runs from one cerebral hemisphere to the another. Simple. It's simply a pathway. And that path as a whole is termed as the nerve bundle fiber and the corpus callosum. We have got different parts, so the nerve fiber from uh, the genome uh, the transmits to, of course, to the specific area 
while the others which passes through the body they run towards the specific area and through the spleen they, they run towards the specific area okay so that's why they are basically classified on the basis of their structure and on the basis of the five on the basis of the fibers which are basically running through them let's talk about the genome the fibers which are passing through the genome usually the frontal lobe fibers or the fibers which are basically arising from the frontal lobe of one hemisphere it passes through the genome to the, the same corresponding point of the frontal lobe in the other hemisphere. So, this, see, so can you actually appreciate what exactly it has made up projection or you can say the fork like fiber? So, they are known as the forcep minor. The fibers which are basically running from the occipital lobe of one cerebral hemisphere towards the same corresponding point of the occipital lobe of the other hemisphere, they are known as the forcep major. Now the fibers which are running through the body, they are quite tricky. You have to little understand about this. The fibers, uh, these nerve fibers, they are basically arising from the temporal lobe, from the parietal lobe. They enter into the body and of course they project out towards the other side. They basically comes into contact with the radiation fibers, right? Those radiation fibers, which are actually when we uh, we earlier talk about the projection fibers, so they become continuous with the projection fibers, and they usually reach to the cortical, the cortex of the cerebrum. All right, so they are known as the uh, the radiations of the corpus callosum. So we have got this different parts and the fibers which are basically running through the corpus callosum. Remember when we talked about the posterior surface of the third ventricle is related to the epithalamus. And the components of the epithelium include the heavy neural nuclei, uh, a pair of heavy neural nuclei. Then we have the pineal gland and its stalk. And then we have the uh, heavy neural commissure. So this is actually the same heavy neural commissure that we are talking about, which is included as the commissure fibers. This is your thalamus, okay? And in between the two thalamus, we have the, this is your third ventricle, which is a component of the diencephalon, okay? It is uh, related to the diencephalon. The, this is your anterior aspect of the third ventricle and this is your posterior. In the posterior aspect, in the upper part of the posterior aspect of the third ventricle, we have two nuclei which are known as the heavy neural nuclei and they are in, interconnected by the heavy neural commissure. And just below this is the midbrain. So beneath this we have the midbrain. Alright, let's talk about this posterior relation. We have the two heavy neural nuclei. Okay. And below this, we have the pineal stalk, okay? Now, these two heavy neural nuclei are interconnected by a fibers, and they are known as the heavy neural commissure. The heavy neural nuclei is tend to receive the fibers from the uh, amygdaloid, the hippocampus. So, therefore, it is said to be related to the uh, brain response, the stimuli such as, to different stimuli such as your, uh, the stress, grief, reward, punishment and all that, okay? Okay, now, the, uh, the above the pineal gland, you can appreciate the heavy neural nuclei and below the pineal gland, we have posterior commissure. So, posterior commissure is located just below the pineal gland and just above there is a very special opening which is present just beneath this posterior commissure which is known as the cerebral aqueduct, the opening of the cerebral aqueduct. Remember when we talked about the ventricular system, we talked about the cerebral aqueduct as, as being the component of the midbrain. Just above that was the diencephalon and the ventricular cavity which is present is the third ventricle in the diencephalon. So this is your midbrain and this is your third ventricle. As the third ventricle of the diencephalon ends up and there is a beginning of the midbrain, so there is a small opening of a ductal opening. All right, now this ductal opening enters into the midbrain, and this is known as the cerebral aqueduct. So, just beneath the posterior commissure, we have the opening of cerebral aqueduct. Posterior commissure are basically related to number of nuclei. They also have got quite a mass of the gray matter which is related to the posterior commissure. However, the functions of those nuclei are still unknown. However, we have seen the posterior commissure are basically also receiving the fibers from the uh, superior colliculi of the midbrain and the pretectal fibers. They are also receiving the fibers from the thalamus. 
and we have seen this posterior commissure is associated with the pupillary light reflexes, okay? Now let's talk about the pharynx. This is your pharynx. Pharynx is located just beneath the corpus callosum in posterior inferior aspect. And how does it begin? It is again a C-shaped bundle of the white matter, which is basically arising from the hippocampus. Now this is, these two are your hippocampus, all right? Now, if it begins as a, a sheet of a white matter and the part which is basically originating within the hippocampus is termed as the alveus or these white matter fiber they combine together and they leave this uh, hippocampus as fimbria and as it leaves the hippocampus it becomes crust of fimbria and it continues as the column of the fornix we have posterior column of furnace. Now as the posterior column curves superior anteriorly, they join together to form body of the furnix. As it basically makes up the body, just before making up the body, you can actually appreciate some transverse fiber running in between the two posterior columns of the furnix. These are known as the commissure of furnix. What are the significance of the commissure of furnix? They tend to basically, you know, we have the two hippocampus and we have two posterior columns. So the information from the one hippocampus is transmitted to another through this commissure of the pharynx. Okay? Okay. Then we have the body and then as it reaches anteriorly in related to, in related to the septum pellucidum and approaching towards the mammary gland, they again split into two making anterior column of the pharynx. These, what are these? These are the mammillary bodies. Okay, what are the function of uh, the pharynx now? It basically helps in transmission of the uh, fibers of the nerve fibers from the hippocampus towards the mammillary body or it is also associated with the transmission of the nerve fibers or towards the thalamus also of course. Mammillary body is also related to thalamus of course it lies its anterior or you can say inferior to the third ventricle. It is a part of what? It is a part of the hypothalamus if you remember. Okay, let's talk about the relation of the pharynx. We have posteriorly the splenium of the corpus callosum as well as the posterior commissure. Superiorly we have the body and some part of the splenium of the corpus callosum. Anteriorly we have the septum pellucidum. along with that we have the anterior commissure and in the middle since we have posteriorly the posterior commissure so therefore in the middle or the medially we have the third ventricle and inferiorly, inferior to this is the Thalamus. Okay, so this is the relation of the pharynx. Then this is how it is located. Okay. Okay. Now let's talk about another type of the fibers, which are known as the the second bundle of the nerve fibers, which is which are running within the cerebellum is the association fibers or are the association fibers. The association fibers are the interconnecting uh, fibers. They interconnect the cortical regions within the same hemisphere. Okay. They are also known as the interhemispheric tract, which are association tract of the brain. So uh, we have got different types of the cortical fibers. For example, let's talk about the cortical fibers. We have the short association fibers and we have the long association fibers connecting the adjacent cortical regions or within the same hemisphere. So we have these are the short association and then we have the long association fibers which are running quite a distance from one lobe interconnecting the uh, one lobe from another within the same set hemisphere such as uncinate fasciculus then we have superior longitudinal longitudinal fasciculus inferior longitudinal fasciculus okay frontal occipital fasciculus then we have cingulum then we have arcuate fasciculus there is another fasciculus definitely you would have come across that is the medial longitudinal fasciculus it is not the part of the cerebrum but it is the part of the brain okay now let me draw let me try to draw this out for you Okay, let's talk about the superior longitudinal fasciculus. The superior longitudinal fasciculus basically connects the frontal lobe and the parietal lobe and the occipital lobe. So this is your superior longitudinal fasciculus. Then we have inferior longitudinal that connects the occipital lobe and the temporal lobe. We have the inferior longitudinal. This is superior longitudinal fasciculus. We have inferior longitudinal fasciculus okay now just above this 
sorry, let me make some space for the singular. Just above this corpus callosum, we have the singular, singulate gyrus, okay? So we have the singulum here. Okay? Alright, then frontal occipital, that is from the frontal to the occipital, of course. Frontal and the temporal, the uncinate fasciculus. So we have got quite the number of the, tri the fibers, the horizontal fibers, which are basically running from anterior to posterior or posterior to interior aspect of the cerebral hemisphere, interconnecting the different regions or the different lobes of the same hemisphere for the coordination and the interconnection. Well, this is it for the association fibers. Now we're going to talk about the projection fibers. As a simple statement, the projection fibers are actually the afferent and the efferent fibers that uh, enters and leaves the cerebral cortex. We had two examples, coronal radiator and the optic radiation. Let's talk about the coronal radiator first. Okay. So we have, you know, we have gray matter present in the center. Okay. Just a very few examples. As the track approaches up, you know, after decussation and then they run up, they reaches through the, after integration and all that, and after running through different nuclei, they approach up to the higher center, okay? And as they pass it towards the higher center, before that they have to cross through the gray matter, present in the diencephalon especially. And we have this specific type of region, or which is known as the internal capsule. These fibers, as they enter the cortical region, they have to cross through this internal capsule. So as it passes through the limb of the internal capsule, later, as it leaves this internal capsule, they project out in the form of the radiation. All right. If you remember, we had the corpus callosum at this point. In the upper aspect, we have the corpus callosum. The body of the corpus callosum gives out certain radi uh, certain fibers. Those are known as, known as the radiation of the corpus callosum. So, for example, considering that this is the body of the corpus callosum, and the fibers, as they approach towards the cortical region or the cortex, of the cerebral hemisphere, they become, uh, in, they join with the fibers of the radiations, okay, the optic, uh, the corona radiata. They become, or they become continuous, or they run along with the fibers of the corona radiata as they approach it towards the cortical region of the brain. They are the same afferent and the efferent fibers, the ascending and the descending tracks in the, they take the radiation form. So therefore they are known as the radiation as they are entering into the cerebrum. But just below the cerebrum or in the lower center of the central nervous system or the lower part of the central nervous system, the same radiation becomes the track, the ascending or the descending track. Okay, do not get confused with the uh, radiations, uh, the, the radiations and the tracks are different. They are the same thing. Now let's talk about another type of the projection fiber that we mentioned earlier, that is the optic radiation. We have two eyes, of course, all right? So we have two masses here, medial geniculate body and the lateral geniculate body. And in between the two thalamus, do you remember what we have? We have the third ventricle, okay? Okay. Now what happened is that the optic nerve, as it approaches towards, we have got actually two fibers of the optic nerve. We have the nasal fiber and the, ox, uh, the temporal fiber. The nasal fiber undergo the decussation. Okay? Whereas the temporal fiber, they continue running towards on the same side. Okay? These are the temporal fibers, they are running on the same side. And they, these both fiber reaches the lateral geniculate body. Okay? They reaches the lateral geniculate body. And as they leave this lateral geniculate body, they have to go actually where? They have to go to the occipital region because the primary visual cortex is present in the occipital lobe. Okay? So they have to go or they have to enter into the occipital area. So as they reach or as they approach the occipital, they do it in the form of the radiations. For example, I'm standing at the level of the lateral geniculate body. I have received the track, the optic nerve track, and now I have to uh, project out towards the occipital lobe. Or these optic radiations has to be, or optic nerve fibers have to be projected out. So they are done in the form of the radiation. In fact, you can see they jump towards the occipital lobe, making a radiation.
So this is how a small optic radiations are transmitted towards the occipital lobe. Okay.